Hey everyone, today's video we are going over treatment for tight hip flexors. I'm gonna show you a few different exercises that you can try from home, and if you notice the ones that work well for you, it probably cues you in a little bit on causes. So we'll go over that as well, some educational stuff. Hi, my name is Dawn. This is Sebastian. Hello. We work at Performance Plan <laughs> by Sports Care. <laughs> oh, was I acting as you? <laughs> and we are in Costa Mesa, California, the locally world famous chiropractors here. So um, I'm going to give a little description of a hip flexor. I like to say actually, so let me take that. Sebastian's going to be my model today. Basically, what is the hip flexor? Some people may know this, some may not, but the hip flexor is actually starts and attaches from the lumbar spine, so from the low back. It's from the vertebra, maybe the top to mid parts of the low back. It doesn't wrap around like I'm showing you here. It actually goes through the belly wall and then comes and attaches right at the hip joint here. So psoas hip flexor really originates from the spine. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna have Sebastian lay down on his belly while I describe this first exercise that you can try at home for your tight hip flexors. Oh no, is it what I think it is? <laughs> no, you're just gonna come up onto your elbows and hang out there. <laughs> okay. So what's really cool is if you wanna know which one's gonna work for you and know a little bit more about your body is try something at home that creates your tightness. Hip flexor tightness is usually a symptom of something more underlying. So I'm gonna start Sebastian in this position because we talked about how the hip flexor attaches from the low back and spine. There are structures like discs and nerves that come out of the, si the spine and supply the hip flexor. It just is what gives it action. And so if those are what's involved, we wanna maybe take some stress off of those structures. So he's just gonna lay here and breathe for a second. And as long as this feels okay, you might notice hip flexor tightness at first getting into this position. As long as it slowly settles and goes away, then you're okay. If it feels a little tighter in this position, move on to the next exercise. But as long as he's okay here, can you go hands under your shoulders? Can you press up five times for me? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, okay, come on back down. By the way, what does hip flexor feel like? I feel like um, a lot of people have uh, probably had similar scenarios. Yeah, definitely. So tight hip flexors, most of the time, it's tightness in the front of the hip here. Usually you can kind of point to it. You might even press into those muscles in the front side and feel some tenderness and soreness. Usually they feel a little overworked, sometimes tight after squatting or deadlifting tight when you've been sitting in a chair for a long time and you go up to a standing position and go walking. Most of the time that's not pinchy and sharp at all, it's just a lot of soreness and achiness going on in that area. And so that soreness and achiness that you've been feeling should slowly diminish if this is the right exercise for you. And if so, yes, we are stretching hip flexors here, but we're also taking maybe some pressure off the structures that can be involved, okay? So we'll go into the second exercise now. Okay, and let's sit you back into what we call a child's pose position. So again, these first two exercises are mainly focused on if the spine and the attachment of the hip flexors at the spine are playing a role in your hip flexor tightness. So if the extension one not feeling so good or didn't help you at all, let's do the opposite motion and open up different structures of the spine and just breathe here. Can you rock up a little bit for me? One thing we may notice is when we're first sitting back into this position, you might feel some pinchiness in the hip flexors. If that's happening to you, just rock up out of that until you don't feel it anymore. Take a couple breaths and let it settle and you might be able to sit back a little bit further each time. And so as you kind of slowly sink into this, take a note on what your hip flexor tightness is feeling like. This one here is a little more opening up the holes where the nerves come out of the spine. And again, if those nerves are playing a role in your hip flexor tightness, this here, I mean, are we doing anything to the hip flexors here, Seb? No, it's, it's basically all shortened. Exactly. They're not activating. They're not pulling up to lift the knees. Um, and they're, they're not being stretched here either. So if you get up out of this position and it makes you feel better, maybe your hip flexor tightness is more spinal related. So I'd try this position for one to two minutes at home, get up and retest and see if it's helpful for you. Yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm off the ground a little bit here just because of the microphone, but most people would probably do it like so. Perfect, just okay. completely relaxed into that position. If you guys are liking this, by the way, and you wanna know a little bit more, there might be a webinar that pops up somewhere. Click on that video, because it'll take you some, through some really cool things about um, hip issues. If you wanna know more about it and be educated and other exercises you can try, take advantage of that. So let's come up into a kneeling position now. There we go. So most people might know about the hip flexor stretch, right? Can you show me the ones that we usually don't want people doing? Let's see, I should get a little bit more in camera then, right? There we go. <laughs> 
Perfect. All that stuff? Yes, exactly. So hip flexor stretches can, there we go. Hip flexor stretches <laughs> can be perfected. You'll see us teaching it a little bit differently here. So I don't want you using your spine in your hip flexor stretch. He's here in this kind of thinking position in the front knee. And we're actually gonna initiate the stretch through activating the glute, the opposing muscle. So if he squeezes that glute and then drives his hip forward towards the foot in front of him and then comes out of it, we're not gonna hold for a stretch, we're gonna rep in and out of it. But cheek squeeze to the foot and back. And we do 10 to 20 reps of that. Again, don't let your hip flexor stretch or tightness increase as we're doing this. Just meet a little bit of resistance and come out of it. And each time you might be able to get a little bit further and a little bit further. I was told I should hold this stretch though. Is that not, that's not what you want? There's nothing wrong with holding it, but I just see that people have better responses when we kind of rep in and out of it, exploring range of motion. Cause sometimes the nervous system can go into a crazy response if we're just forcing this intense stretch that you're like, oh, it feels so good. And afterwards you might end up feeling worse. So slowly explore the position, slowly um, expose your body to this movement and see how it goes. Yeah, that's kind of the thing is like, I think people sometimes, I know you've had, probably had people you work with as experiences too, is after they do their exercises, if we pick the wrong ones or they do them poorly, like, well, after I did my stretch or my exercise, I feel like I had to like put, go on ice. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you had to cool your body down after doing the thing that was supposed to help you. Well, no, I think we picked the wrong one or you're doing it poorly or whatever. Absolutely. That specific exercise is not necessarily spinal related like the first two. If that one works better for you, we might be looking at something more underlying in the hip joint itself. Things like impingement issues or some arthritic changes or just needing better hip mobility so that that hip flexor can loosen up and not be as tight. So if that one works for you, that might cue you in a little bit better too. Yeah. If you guys are looking for more help on this, we do offer virtual and person sessions. Uh, we have something called a discovery session, which is a consultation, which you should take advantage of. It's pretty pretty affordable and you get to, get to talk to people like Dawn. Yay. Yeah, she can tell you all about uh, stories of, of her life, how she was on the wrong side of the tracks one day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, subscribe to the channel. Uh, uh, and we'll, we have a lot more videos on hip flexors on our channel, so subscribe, use the search bar. We'll see you guys next time.